If I would have to suggest one vulnerability that's totally underrated, prototype pollution will definitely be my choice. With rising popularity of Node.js, it's everywhere. So let's see how to exploit it, solving CTF challenge. This is CTF School, a place where you can learn about computer security, solving capture the flag challenges. Today we're gonna take a look at TJCTF 2022. There's an interesting challenge named Fruit Store. There's not much of the description, but we are provided with the server source code. Unzipping the archive, we can take a look into the application files. The presence of package.json and JavaScript files suggests that this app is written in Node.js. Besides, we've got a Docker file that can help us to run this challenge locally, but taking a quick look into it, we can see that it's not doing anything more than copying the app files into the machine and then running the Node.js server itself. Again, we're gonna pass on Docker as it will be far easier for us to just start it with Node.js I've already got installed on my machine. But I can promise you that we will use Docker to solve some of the challenges in the future. Back to our task, let's take a peek at the live version of this app running on the challenge server. The surprise here is that, unlike with other tasks in this CTF, we are not provided with the URL to working instance directly, but rather need to create our own instance that will live for only one minute. Solving a quick captcha and waiting for a few seconds we are getting our very own instance for this challenge. And this is a huge hint. Creating a separate instance for each team is not trivial. Use more resources and takes time to implement. Usually when the challenge author decides to go this way, it means that while exploiting the vulnerability, we can make changes to the server that will affect other players. This helps us to narrow down the list of potential vulnerabilities we might face here. Considering the fact that besides the player separation, we have an app written in Node.js, we won't make a mistake having our eyes wide open looking for the prototype pollution vulnerability. But what is prototype pollution? JavaScript, since its early versions, has a very special way of handling inheritance. Instead of having a base classes, like in other object-oriented languages, we can build something that's called the prototype chain. Making the long story short, when we create an object in example using object.create method, we can pass another object to be its prototype. All the properties of the prototype are kind of inherited. In practice, when an object property is called, in example we want to read the manufacturer of my notebook, JavaScript looks for that field in the object it's invoked on. But if it's not found in there, it looks up the prototype chain, seeking for it in the parent and the parent until it's found. The weak spot of this mechanism is that if we can pollute one of the high-level prototype objects by assigning their malicious field or method, then many of its children will have it present as well. In example, every object created with the curly braces syntax has the same prototype by default. Polluting it can mess up entire application in the way that will help us to get the flag. But how to achieve this? Let's play with this app. To do it, we need to install all necessary packages using npm install and then run node index.js to start the local server. Looking into the fruit shop website, it seems that we can buy various products from the list spending money associated with our session. One product seems to be way above our budget. Grass costs unspeakable amount. And of course, if we try to buy it, we get informed that we don't have enough money. What's so special about grass? Let's dive into the source code to find the answer. Opening index.js file, we can see multiple endpoints. The main root isn't interesting, as it's only showing the main page. The buy endpoint is a more complex one. We can see that it has a short section validating a request, in example not allowing us to buy negative number of fruits. Then, some logic checking if we have enough money and if the store got enough fruits to sell. 
Two other endpoints that we haven't got a chance to play with using UI are slash API v1 money that allows to get additional money, but only if our session got the admin field set and slash API v1 sell allowing to sell our fruits. The middleware function above running with every request sets initial amount of money if it's not defined in our session yet and sets the admin flag, but only if our request comes from local network. Although it's not the case here, uh, this kind of protection can sometimes be bypassed with SSRF. You can see how to do it in my previous video with the link showing right now in the top right corner. Back to the code. One last thing is uh, solving the mystery of the grass. This fruit costs a lot of money for a reason, as while buying it we will be able to read its description. The flag. So the plan seems to be simple. Let's become an admin add a huge amount of money to our session, buy some grass, get the flag. How can we use prototype pollution to achieve it? One important thing here is that post request bodies are parsed as JSON. That means json.parse method is running under the hood to change the JSON formatted text that we sent into a JavaScript object. To cause prototype pollution, we usually need to assign something to underscore underscore proto underscore underscore property of an object having a prototype. So maybe, just maybe, we need to send a JSON like this and that's it? Unfortunately for us, json.parse method got this kind of attack mitigated and instead of assigning the admin field to the prototype, it just creates the proto field in our object directly. So nothing gets polluted. No good. But there is one trick that usually works. We need to look for a loop that will rewrite all the fields of our object to another object that has the prototype. In that case, at some point, one of the loop iterations will do the following assignment, which will pollute the prototype. Great. Let's look for the code like this in our example. Quick screening of the index.js file and it's here. Check the cell method. A for loop below is going through every field of every object we've provided in the request body. And then if only the field name is not quantity, it gets assigned directly under the same key to the fruit object. Some of the fruit objects are created using curly braces syntax, meaning that they've got the base object set as prototype. Polluting it will result in having our field set in every object created this way. Hopefully, the session object as well. Let's prepare our exploit. In my case, I'll do it with Insomnia Client that allows to easily test REST APIs. It can be downloaded from insomnia.rest and it works on nearly any OS. As we are planning to make multiple requests to the same server, I suggest to put the base URL as our environment variable. Let's just fill this JSON with uh, HTTP localhost and port 3000. Let's click done. Our first request should help us to become an admin. And this will be the one that will pollute the base object prototype. We can enter URL to the cell endpoint with control space. I can see our environment variable. Put the rest of the endpoint address. Choose this to be a post request and set the body encoding to JSON. Let's write it like this, saying that every new object should have an admin property set to true. How's that? Because hopefully the loop we've seen will help us to pollute the base object with that field. Second request is to get a lot of money. So I'll start duplicating previous one. I'll just change the URL and then the body to say how much cash I would like to get. Let's copy the number from the source code and paste it in here. Last step, buy the fruit containing the flag. Let's put the buy endpoint in here. Say it's uh, grass I want to get and set the quantity to one. Looks good. Let's test it locally. Become an admin. Get a lot of money by the flag. Wow, works. Of course, that's just a fake flag, so let's try it on the real thing. We need to get back to the CTF portal. 
create an instance, put the URL into our Insomnia environment, make the requests, and we got it. Woof! Weakest 60 seconds of my life, but yes. Hope you liked this video. Please comment below to let me know what vulnerability you'd like to see next. Like and subscribe not to miss new episodes of CTF School. See you next time. Bye bye.